Hello book besties. So for this video, we are going to be doing a reading vlog of things we never got over. I asked you guys on my bookstagram, currently dot overbooked if you want to go give it a follow, um, what I should read between things we got never got over and from Luke of with love. And as of right now, um, things we never got over is winning by a long shot. So I'm just going to declare her the winner because Nolan and I are about to go to the gym. It's like 940 at night right now, but we like to go to the gym late because we have gym anxiety, teehee. So we don't like to work out when like people are around. Um, but I'm going to bring my current read because I usually get done way before Nolan because all I do is cardio and like a few ab workouts. So I figured I would use that extra time to start things we never got over because she is a thick gal. She, she's hefty. So I just know it's probably going to take me a while to get through this book, especially because I am a full-time college student. So yeah, I just thought we would get the ball rolling, you know? Um, so yeah. Also, this will be a spoiler-free reading vlog. I'm going to have a spoiler section at the end of the video. So I'm also going into this book completely blind. I don't know what it's about. I know it's small town. I know people like it. So yeah. So it is the next day and I am 80 pages into things we never got over. Lucy Score's writing is so addictive. I was literally hooked from the start and that really surprised me, honestly, because this book has never really been piquing my interest until I was gifted it by a friend. So, yeah, pleasantly surprised that I am loving this book so far. It's basically about Naomi and Knox. It's dual POV. Naomi is a one runaway bride. She has a twin sister who's like the complete opposite of her and is overall just like not a good person. Naomi thinks that her sister is in some sort of like financial trouble. So she goes to knock Mount Virginia to help her. However, her sister being the bad person that she is steals from Naomi and then leaves her child behind that Naomi did not know anything about. So now Naomi is in a town that she knows no one and is a guardian to her niece that she didn't know about. Like it's just a whole ordeal. Luckily, she met Knox and Knox for some reason is just so like intrigued by her or like pulled in by her for some reason, which he doesn't really quite understand. And he just feels the need to like look out for her and like take care of her, even though like they did not hit it off. They were literally like fighting in a coffee store because everyone thinks that Naomi is her twin sister and this is a small town. So Everyone basically hates Naomi because they think it's her sister. And yeah, so it's small town, dual POV, a little bit of frenemies to lovers, I want to say, and grumpy ex sunshine. That's the kind of vibes that I'm getting so far. There's a, like, a tw like a tiny smidgen of a love triangle, but I don't know how long that's going to last, to be honest. But yeah, I am really enjoying this book, so... I will check in with you guys later. It is update time. So it is a while later than when I filmed the last clip. It's like 9 p.m. I'm 40% through things we never got over. I'm on page 230 and I can't believe that I am moving through this book so quickly. There's just something about Lucy Score's writing that is just so addicting and like easy to get through. Like I'm just speeding through this book. Like it's amazing. Um, yeah, like I'm also procrastinating like my homework right now because this is so much more important to me. I'm sorry, like I just love Naomi and Knox and I know I wasn't sure if it was enemies to lovers, but it kind of is enemies to lovers because there's some sort of like dislike between them and I just love Knox so much. I love that he just doesn't get that he likes Naomi. Like it's just so funny. Cause he's just a big old grump. He's just a big Oscar the Grouch, okay? And I love how he's just like so much softer towards Wele, like Naomi's niece and like how he's becoming that like role model or like fa father figure for her. So it's just so cute. I also love 
waylay i normally don't like kids in books because sometimes they just come off like too either too childish or like too sophisticated or mature like it's it's kind of hard to like find that like happy medium but waylay is just like a perfect mix of oh she's sassy but she's also like a child like she's not like written like a 30 year old sassy woman she's a sassy 11 year old like i just love that but yeah i honestly don't know how much farther i'm gonna read tonight i'm going to the gym with nolan at like 9 30 because it's ab day apparently um so wish me luck but yeah i am so pleasantly surprised by this book i don't know I'm predicting it's probably gonna be like a four or five star like that's the way it's headed right now because I knew Lucy score was hyped up for a reason but I didn't think it was a reason this good like it's so good so it is Thursday February 23rd um I did not film anything yesterday because I didn't read anything yesterday um I had to study for a test that I have today so I was trying to be a responsible student but I did read some more of the book um, on Tuesday night and I got to page like 260. And from what I could remember, things were happening. Things got steamy and I was living for it. I was there for it. It was so good. Um, and then Naomi's parents were literally cracking me up, especially her mom. The way that her mom like reacted to Knox is how my mom would react if she if if I was in that scenario if we were all in that scenario Naomi's mom is my mom like it was so funny but the second book just came out like a few days ago and it's from Nash's point of view it's his love story because this is a series and I am so tempted to buy it even though I'm not even finished with this one because I just know I'm gonna be obsessed like I'm already obsessed and I'm not even like halfway through I'm only 40% through so, oh, I just, I love it so much, but I am technically on a book buying ban. I'm trying not to spend any money right now on books, but I do have some money left over on my Barnes & Noble gift card. So, is it really breaking my book buying ban if I use a gift card? Like, that's free money right there. Like, that, does, that doesn't count, right? Plus, Nolan has a soccer game today, and there's a Barnes & Noble like 10 minutes away from where he plays soccer. So it's like a sign. It's a sign that I should buy the second book and do a reading vlog. I did it, guys. It is the next day, February 23rd, Friday. I went to Barnes & Noble last night with Nolan because there was a Barnes & Noble like 10 minutes away from where he plays soccer. So we went like 30 minutes before close. I rushed in there and I got things we hide from the light. I am so excited. I don't know if I'm going to read this right after I read Things We Never Got Over because I kind of want to like savor the Knock em Out series. But Lucy Score just announced the third book and like the, um, the cover and it's gorgeous. Like all these covers are so pretty. But yeah, this one focuses on Nash and... Um, lena so and i think they are neighbors or something so yeah and then since it was buy one get one i also got addicted to you i have been wanting to start this series for a while now it's just a very long series i think i think there's like um a main one and then a sequel series so i have been a little hesitant to start it because like once you start the first book like you kind of have to continue but this was like the only book on the buy one get one that like really piqued my interest so I figured like I know I'm gonna read the addicted to you series at some point so I might as well like just get the first book plus the first book isn't too long it looks like so it seems like the other books are a little bit longer so yeah this is my haul a little bit of a sob story though, I did break my book buying ban because I went up to the cash register, I gave her my gift card, and she was like, this is like, there's no balance on here. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what do you mean? Like, I had the receipt from the last time I was here, like, and it tells me that there's a card remaining balance. And so she looks at the receipt, she's like, 
this is the wrong card. So that means that the last time I went there, whoever checked me out accidentally threw away the wrong card. And I'm just so sad because instead of $25, this probably would have been like $5. I'm not even kidding. It's fine though. I still got a really good deal. Like this was nine bucks and this was like 13 bucks. So, so moving back on track with like the actual topic of the video, things we never got over. I am currently 330 pages into the book. Um, I think that's about 57%, I want to say. So we're making really good progress. I think I'm going to finish this book either Saturday or Sunday. So wish me luck on that. But nothing new is like really happening. Like there's not a lot of drama right now. There is an element of fake dating that I really enjoy. Fake dating is probably one of my top favorite tropes. So yeah, I'll update you guys if anything exciting happens. It is the next day, February 25th, Friday. And I'm about like 70% through things we never got over. I annotated the book at like midnight because I just got like an urge to like have all three books of the series annotated. Like just imagine how pretty it's going to be to like have the blue book and then the pink book, Things We Had From The Light, and then the third book is purple. Like the annotating, um, what is it called? Potential is so good for this series. Like I'm just, it has a chokehold on me. Right now, I'm a little frustrated because I'm at the part where, like, you know, the third act breakup happened, of course. Duh. It didn't really make me angry because, like, it just makes sense. It's kind of stupid, but it makes sense. Like, bro has baggage. And I'm just kind of, like, waiting it out. But Lena, who is one of the main characters in the second book with Nash, I'm pretty sure that's the love interest for Nash for the next book. She showed up and I literally got so happy. I literally was like giggling because I was like, oh my gosh, a little cameo, if you will. Like, so cute. So yeah, I'm definitely going to finish it today. There is no doubt in my mind. So... you're crying okay i just finished things we never got over and this book almost wrecked me okay keyword almost i was reading the epilogue and i literally was like choking back tears because i have a full face on right now like i cannot be crying and ruining my makeup for a fictional man right now like i i can't but Knox literally love him i am always a sucker for the grumpy main male character. It always reminds me of my boyfriend because we are the grumpy ex sunshine trope. Literally, no one can tell me otherwise. I also loved the subplot of finding out what's going on with Naomi's twin sister, Tina, and like why she left Waylay. That real, that like aspect of like mystery and like crime was like really entertaining for me. I also really loved Waylay. Normally, I don't like kids in books because they just feel written kind of like odd, I guess. Like it doesn't feel natural. Like they don't really act like kids. But I really loved Waylay's character. I loved how she was like learning how to trust the adults in her life again because of how horrible her mom treated her. Her relationship with Knox was like one of my favorite parts, honestly. Their friendship made the book for me I'm not kidding I also really love Naomi and like her journey of self-discovery and growth was really refreshing I loved how she I loved how the book focused on needing to take care of yourself before taking care of others um because that is the true self-care right there you know what they always say they say that put on your like little mask at the on the airplane before everyone else's because you have to help yourself before helping others. Boundaries, healthy boundaries. And this book is not only a love story between Naomi and Knox, but it is a love story between Knox, Naomi, and Waylay. Like the way that he talked to Waylay and 
basically took her in as her own as his own child was just uh, chef's kiss like literally so good also loved like naomi being that like role model that Wei needed like it's so good and i loved how the extended epilogue also showed us um Wei all grown up like it just it hit okay it was so good um i think overall i would rate this book a 4.5 there wasn't anything like that i had an issue with i'm gonna be honest um it just never gave me that like five star vibe like it never gave me that feeling so it's the next best thing it's a 4.5 it's so good um one thing that i wasn't the biggest fan of was how long the third act breakup was but like it wasn't in a bad way i guess like it made sense to me like Knox had a lot of issues like and baggage that he had to deal with now do i wish that he went to therapy yes but but like it's fine because he he healed he healed he got there um i'm so excited for to read nash's book it's i'm just nothing hits more than a small town romance okay i love small town romances now would i want to live in a small town no i used to live in a small town and it was awful but small town romances just give me that gilmore girls stars hollow comfy vibes and i need that right now okay i need some comfy vibes but and i'm even though i am excited for nash's book i'm the most excited for lucy's book or lucin or however we say his name they call him lucy i think he is just gonna be the icing on the cake for me i just love a grumpy billionaire he just ah uh, so excited so that is it for this video that is my reading vlog if you want more reading vlogs in the future like let me know i really enjoyed reading the, like doing this process while reading it was so much fun um if you've read things we never got over like let me know in the comments let me know your thoughts like so we can fangirl over this book together um i honestly can't believe it took me this long to read a lucy score book because like miss girl is so good no wonder everyone is like reading her back catalog right now because she deserves all the hype she can get i'm just so happy i'm like i literally can't stop smiling it's so good okay well i will see you guys next time thank you so much for watching i have a bookstagram um it's called currently dot overbooked i post daily i post reels reviews just like bookish content whenever i'm not filming videos so feel free to follow me if you want to see more of my face and feel free to subscribe if you want more book videos so bye Thank you.